regulation of the nervous system. This short video explores how we can re-regulate our nervous system, which can almost create a shield around the wounded part of ourselves. To try and regulate our nervous systems, do you think there is a tendency to go towards alcohol, drugs, food, um, unhealthy relationships to try and regulate our nervous systems? But obviously that is, we're moving towards the things that ultimately are dysregulating our nervous systems even further. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's reasonably accurate. Um, the, the thing about a nervous system is it needs regulating. So if I can't self-regulate, I'm going to need to do one of two things. I can either lean on external regulators, and drugs and alcohol are a great example of them. I mean, alcohol is a great regulator of the sympathetic nervous system. It'll just dampen it down straight away. Um, alcohol is a great regulator of the sympathetic <laughs> nervous system. It will just chemically sort it out and calm it down, probably for about 10, 20 minutes really well. And then you have all the other problems that come along, which is that, you know, then you've got downstream problems to try and deal with the effects of having taken alcohol. Usually that's you end up drinking more alcohol, and then you end up drunk and all sorts of problems happen. So... External regulation obviously works, and it's the, it's the go-to strategy of most of us most of the time. The entire coffee and alcohol industry, it's enormous. Pornography industry, um, travel industry even, um, online shopping, you could even argue. You know, so many things are about providing moments or extended periods of regulation. And these are the great industries of our planet. So there is a, a, a third way, if you like, of regulation that isn't solely internal or external. And it's kind of a mutual regulation. So we sometimes call it co-regulation. And this is really nicely defined by Stephen Porges, who I'm a big fan of, as a mutual cues of safety. So it's, it, what's different is that it's interesting in relationships because if I'm going to use you as an external regulator in a relationship, then basically I'm getting something from you. I'm not really giving you anything. Right? And we kind of know those relationships. But a, a co-regulating relationship is just as much as you're helping me to regulate, I'm helping you to regulate at the same time. It's a bit more sophisticated and a bit more difficult to do because quite often what, um, you know, what I might want you to do for me might actually not be great for you. Mm. So you end up in a power battle. If I'm trying to get you to regulate me, well, you're trying to get me to regulate you. And it's like, who wins? Can you give an example of that? Uh, yeah, so let's say you have two people and one's really clingy and one is uh, kind of distant. You end up with these arguments about, you know, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, well, you know, I'm going to go off and play rugby with my mates and then hang out in the pub and then maybe I'll see you at two in the morning. And the other side is like, but well, I don't want you to do that. I want you to cuddle under the sofa and watch TV and drink hot chocolate all afternoon. And so who wins? You know, one person's need is to feel safe from having lots of other social connections, and the other person's need is to feel safe from being really intimately bundled into um, one, one small relationship. And to a certain extent, I think the success or failure of relationships is often determined by how we navigate these mutually exclusive areas of safety. So if what makes me feel safe makes you feel dangerous to give it to me, then um, we've got a problem. Obviously, it's easy when both people want the same thing, and it's easy when both people don't want something. Uh, so keeping in mind the, this idea that nervous system regulation is kind of our highest priority can help solve an awful lot of problems in an awful lot of different ways. <laughs>